Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. I pray everybody didn't overdo it, breaking their fast. <laughs> missing a few this morning, but uh, thankful that you made it here. Amen. Yes. Good to have our visitors with us. We tell you, if you come three times, your family, and they mean that. So, so good to have you checking us out today. And uh, we do have a special speaker today, and so I'm not going to be up here too long, but. Uh, how many would enjoy hearing clearly from the Lord this week? Amen. Did you get a game plan for what's coming? Some of you did. Amen. I mean, as we were worshiping the Lord this morning, uh, I don't know where you're at today, but the Lord kept speaking to me. You know, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And if you entered in wholly, full, wholeheartedly this morning, there was anointing in the house. And you had the opportunity to leave changed. And I pray that you grab the hold of that. Now the thing is, is you can pick up where you left off when you walk out those doors. I encourage you not to do that. Come on. He said, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. I am thankful he didn't say only those that are perfect shall be filled. If you have a hungering for more of the things of God, he'll meet you where you're at and help you get to where you need to go. So don't be discouraged this morning. Be encouraged. And don't leave the same way you came in. Some of you are getting happy in your spirit. I can feel it. It's much better. Lord, isn't that good news? Yes. Come on, that's what he came to proclaim, the good news. Hallelujah. Jesus is who he says he is, can do what he said he could do. Glory, God. You know, there's a lot of verses in the Bible, some of them that, that we don't we think, well, I don't want to hear that, you know. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. I hate to break it to you, but you're, you're going to have trouble. But he said, be of good cheer. And I always like that because it makes me think of the joy of the Lord. I believe that's what he's talking about there. He said, I have already overcome the world. Hallelujah. So you're going to have some stuff. But the answer is always getting into the Lord, getting under his anointing, breaking that yoke, getting full of the joy of God. So you can laugh at the devil. Ha ha ha. You know? That way you feel like you can swing out over hell in a corn stalk and spit in the devil's eye. It's just good old hillbilly for you. But I wanted to cast just a little bit of vision. I'm not going to take very long this morning. Uh, you know. Uh, 2022, uh, God spoke to us at the beginning of the year about all the things that happened now. And to be honest, uh, up until the moment they took place, they looked impossible. But you're sitting in a place of possibilities. And I'm here to tell you that 2023 is no less for the things I believe he's asking us to accomplish at the bottom. But, you know, it says he is lifted up. He says he will draw all men unto him. He didn't say when you get all the programs just right. He said when you lift him up, right? The Bible says it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. How do they know that he's good? Because they see it in your life. Right? And so there's several things he's asked us to uh, accomplish. One we're in the middle of working on. That's the hope house behind. How many know we've been praying for that for over a decade? A place to go with our overcomers, recovery ministries, a place... We're going to put on the big wall and everyone God showed us. And 22, right now, chronos time, big now, is a perfect time for a duo. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, people can say whatever they want, but I've never met an individual that didn't need a do-over in their life. Mm -hmm. And so right now we have enough bedrooms for three people in there, but Lord willing, we're going to put an egress window in and uh, go down and we'll have enough to, hopefully about six people in there before it's said and done. And... Uh, how many know it's going to cost a few thousand a month to take care of that? And if you look around, you say, well, God, I don't know how you're going to do that. Well, I didn't know, I don't know how a brown cow eats green grass and gets white milk, but God does it. I don't know how he got us in this church for him, but he does it. I mean, I do know you how it's called. It's called faith. It's bringing the unseen into the seen. Right? So he's going to be ramping that up, and then we're going to be firing up. We took a little bit of battle. We're going to be starting to fire up sometime this year, Lord willing. And everybody gets their acts together. Big smile. We're going to be firing up the Compassion Ministries again. 
We did that for over a decade. We're going to be doing it. So it's going to look a little different. We're going to be having, we used to go uh, out and we'd feed the meal every week. And we're still doing some of that, but once a month, we're going to have a nice meal downstairs. We'll bus them in with our new buses and things that God's provided. And uh, we'll also be having a uh, food bank and some things down there to go along with that. And, uh, you know, he said, you're always going to have the poor. He said to treat them like he was here and to love on them. Uh, they're not to be our main focus, honestly, but they're not to be no focus either. Right. So we're going to love on them. And just the same way, we're going to love on somebody that's got so much money, they're afraid to let anybody get close to them. Because they're human beings too. And they need something, they need the same thing we all need, Jesus. And we'll figure out a way to reach them too. Because it's a go ye gospel, amen? amen. So go into the highways and byways and compel them to come. And we're going to be doing that. We'll be moving ahead. And there's a bunch more coming. Uh, we'll be having several outreaches this year. I'm not going to spend much more time. Uh, but as things get closer, as things start unfolding, we'll be praying about those things. Amen. And uh, on top of finances, guess what else it takes to do these things? Bodies. Well, people that are willing. The Bible says pray for the harvest are few so you know what uh, Paul wrote a bunch of letters to the churches I decided I just didn't want to be in any of those I just wanted to be the church you know when I want him to come back I want him to say well done thy good and faithful servants I found you faithful you were about your father's business amen, amen. and if we can do that then we're successful but how are we going to accomplish all these things? By focusing on more of him in us in 2023. And as he is lifted up, as, as we decrease and he increases, he makes all these things possible. But, but first, you know, he, he's tried us. He's found us faithful in the small things. And he's ready to pour it on us. So now's not a time to be lax or take back of your feet and go, well, we're here. Come on. It's going to be a great time in God. I'm excited for our youth. I'm excited what's coming. There's so many things exploding on the front, but we can only move as far forward as you are willing to go with that. Amen? I can have all the vision in the world. God can give us all the tools. We need. We've got phenomenal tools, but you're only as good as people are willing to chase the us. Now, here's the thing. We're not trying to take all your time. So good to see Corey this morning. Yes. He's like, he's the pastor of the year. <laughs> I'm praying for him. I slipped down in prayer. Praise God. So, you know, well, the, 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 the moral of what we're getting to this morning is, you know, let's just be about our Father's business. What I was trying to say is you can't outgive God. And most of the time when folk, people talk about that, they think about money. But it's physically, financially. Spiritually, you give unto God. And I found that the enemy will tell you, well, if you give all that time, you're not going to have any time left and it's going to cost you all. You know what I found out in my life? The same way with finances, I cannot give him my time. Because when I put him first, you know, for one, he gives me wisdom. And he, then, he, then, he, then he increases the quality of my time. So that the time I'm donating to him, not donating that, I'm serving him. How I many know he's to be our Lord? Amen. We treat him like a, a cheap boss sometimes. But when I give him my time, he, he presses down into me good measure, running over 30, 60, 100 fold. You know what I get to be? I get to be, I get to be happy. I get to be full of joy. I get to be a perfect piece in myself. And, then I get, and guess what? If God's called you to do something, I got news from you from a guy that ran for a very long time. I'm not proud of that. But you will never be satisfied doing anything but what God's called you to do. Yeah. And guess what? He's called every every believer to the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. That means we're all to be helping people get to know Jesus. Well, Pastor, I even got all back together. Well, great. Show them how you got as far as you got. Come on. I know I wasn't supposed to stay up here this long. 
the glory. Anybody excited about what God's doing in 2023? Yeah. It's going to be a great year. Lots more to come. But you know, and then uh, Pastor Timmy forgot to announce it again. I'm going to have to drive it home with him. February 12th is what? Pack the Pews. Pack the Pews Sunday. Are we doing this so we can say we got a bunch of people in church? No. But uh, people buy into stuff, so let them buy into it. We're going to meet them with Jesus right here. So pack the view, Sunday, invite every neighbor you got. It's a good excuse to invite somebody to church. Hey, we're having this event. Uh, I don't care how you say it. I, I'm not a guy of gimmicks. We're doing it because God told us to. And we want to see the house full. And we want to see the glory of God descend. Amen. Amen. So that's February 12th. Other than that, uh, I'd like you to welcome the most holy reverend, holy wild, Deb Allen. <laughs> is now <laughs> you know I'm very honored to stand here of course I I feel like I need a step stool <laughs> you know I might have to come out so I can see y'all <laughs> you know I'm, I'm truly honored because the last time that I preached in this building was in 2012 in May and that time during the sermon, the Holy Ghost got a hold of me, and I won't do it today unless he does it. But I was standing right here, and in the middle of my sermon, I jumped and landed by that pew there. You know, it's amazing what God will do through you if you let him. Like Pastor said, more of God in, in me in 23. You know, what happens you know, uh, in different things, you know, but God, when things happen in our life, we may not understand it, but God, he will take it and cause you to flourish in him, not in you, but in him. Let's go to Matthew 16. And I'm going to read quite a few scriptures and break it down. Matthew 16, starting at verse 1. The Pharisees also, with the Sadducees, came and tempted, desired him, meaning Jesus, that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, when it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowing. And ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of time. I'm going to stop there for a minute. These are Sadducees and Pharisees that's in the church ministering the word of God. But yet they're not listening to the true king. They're not listening to Jesus Christ. He's already been showing them signs and wonder. Again, what happened? They didn't care what he had to say because he was different. They didn't care what he was doing because he was different. How many know that in our walk of life, God is going to make us a peculiar people? We're going to be peculiar. He's going to cause us to jump from this platform to that pew. The people out there may not understand it, but the person that's listening to God is going to understand it because they're going to allow him to work through them. Verse 4, it says, A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after signs, and there shall no signs be given unto it. But the sign of the prophet Jonah, as he left them and departed. 
Why did he leave and depart? They wasn't listening. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. He couldn't teach them no more because their heart had grown cold. Listen to me. There's times Jesus is trying to show us something. Pastor Brian Williams is trying to show us something. But we know better. No, we don't. We need to listen to Jesus. We need to listen to Pastor Brian Williams. And how many know, I know the things that he's spoken to my life, they've come to pass. Because God put Pastor Brian Williams in this house for a reason. And that's to shepherd you and me. And when the disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They didn't listen to what Jesus was going to say. I'll read it again. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now the disciples, they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived and said unto them, O ye of little faith. It wasn't because they forgot the bread. Why reason ye among yourselves because you have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets was taken up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets taken up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now back in those days, yeast was often used as a metaphor for evil in the Jewish teaching, not because it was unclean or it wasn't eatable. But the yeast begins as a very small piece or thing, and it becomes larger and larger and larger, kind of like our gossip. Somebody tells you something, and you don't know if it's true or not, but you go tell somebody else. And then that person they don't know if it's true or not. They don't even know the person that they're talking about. But they go tell somebody else. And then pastor has to come along and pick up the mess. That's what Jesus was doing. He was picking up the mess. Because even though the disciples was with him every day, all day long, they ate with him, they walked with him, they talked with him. They was under his teachings. They slept where he slept. But they didn't understand because they didn't listen to what he was saying. This year is going to be a time we need to listen. Because there's so many people in churches out there. Hmm. They think they know God. They think they're teaching God. But they're so far from the truth. Thank you, Jesus. They are so far from the truth. Why? Because they're chasing man. They're not chasing God. Pastor will tell you, don't take my word for it. Look at the scriptures on your own. Read them. Study them. Know the scriptures. Know the scriptures to show yourself approved. 
If we can't show ourselves approved in the scriptures, then how can we go through those doors and teach the ones on the street? Not only that, Jesus was preparing them. What happened? They wasn't listening to the preparation. Because it wasn't going to be long that Jesus wasn't going to be with them. And he had to make sure that they knew that whatever the Sadducees and the Pharisees was teaching, it was going to mess the people up. And that the, the disciples had to know the truth, feel the truth, understand the truth, and have the wisdom of knowledge what wasn't the truth so that they could minister to the people and help the brokenhearted or the ones that had been deceived or destroyed and help clean up the mess after Jesus was gone. How well do you really know your pastor? Oh, I know. You're here on Wednesday and you're here on Sunday. Did you know that how well you know your pastor is going to be how well you know Jesus Christ? Because Jesus sent your pastor to you to teach you, to equip you, to help you understand, to give you the wisdom and the knowledge that the Lord is giving. You need to know what he's teaching and understand him. Yes. Yes. Amen. You gotta know Jesus. You don't want to become unleavened. Unleavened is when the yeast is in the bread and it grows larger and larger. You don't want to be unleavened. That's why so many times back in those days they ate the bread without the yeast. I don't know how that would taste. I don't know if I'd want to do that. But they would eat the bread without the yeast. We need to understand what is going on and what God wants for us. Jesus had to spell it out for them. Sometimes I need it spelled out for me. I can remember a time when I came to a church, a pastor says, I'm going to tell you one time. And you better get it because I ain't telling you a second time. God has softened that pastor quite a bit because he met me. Sometimes I take two or three times before it gets sunk in. But you know what? Once I got it, I got it. And I'm ready to run with it because I know it's what God wants, not what I want. There are times that we have to make adjustments or changes due to the situation of our life. But we don't have to stay there. Ecclesiastics 3.1 says, everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Things are only for a season and just because we have been put in a situation or changes in our life. We don't have to stay there. 
on the 21st of August, 21. I had been laying on my bedroom, bathroom floor since Wednesday night. And I wasn't found until Sunday morning. Now in the world, if you haven't had water for three days, you're pretty much counted out. But God. And I ended in the hospital for almost two months. During that time, I died about three times. But the church was praying for me, several churches, several friends. But I also had to do my part because things weren't getting done. Once some changes, they got, they tried to keep me on a ventilator, not once, but twice. That didn't happen. Finally got to go to an open ICU. And that's when, even though everybody was praying for me and speaking to me, I was getting promises from people that never came to pass. But while I laid in that bed, I had to take and read scriptures to gain my strength so that I would be able to get up and get out. Because therapy wasn't helping. We won't go there. And finally, the doctor came in. I said, I'm going home. Well, long story. I went home. They said, you're going to be back in two weeks. You're going to have to have therapy. I said, no, I won't. I went home. Folks, I couldn't walk. I literally could not walk. My son helped me to the stairs. I couldn't even lift my leg to go up the steps into my home. I had to turn around and sit down. And I'm, it wasn't a pretty sight, but I made it up those steps. And it took about 45 minutes, and then I had to turn over on my stomach. And my son's like, what do you want me to do? I said, I don't know. We just got to go with the flow. <laughs> and I crawled to my recliner, and I got my hands on both arms of the recliner, and I couldn't move. I said, you're going to have to grab me by my belt and lift me up into my chair. But I learned to walk. Again. Then in February, I was in a car accident and I walked away from the car. The responders were in awe. They couldn't understand how I walked away from the car because the front end was in the front seat. So I got through that. And then in August, the doctor put me on oxygen, which I'm supposed to be wearing. But God. Because of that, on August 16th, my job, the place that I work, caused me to retire in a position throughout the years I had been in for about 25 years. On October 16th, I was in another car accident. And I'm still having to work with the doctors, but you know what? I'm not supposed to be standing up here today. I'm not supposed to be walking. I have a, fresh, a fractured, completely fractured meniscus, and I have a fracture in my knee on the side and the back of it. And I'm not supposed to be walking, but God. Amen. What happened? The circumstances happened, but God took over. Why? Because I allowed him to. So many times, you guys, 
are so comfortable where you're at that you're not allowing God to move you forward. You're not allowing God to take you to the place that he wants to take you. Even though we're being ministered to and equipped and given the tools, we're not listening to what God wants to do in our lives. That's why it's very important that you become less of you and more of him in 23. Watch him change your life. It doesn't matter if you're five years old or 105 years old. If you're alive, God can use you. God wants to use you. But you have to see where he wants you and listen to him. Let's go to Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Don't look to the right or to the left. Don't focus on what other people are doing or what they're saying. Focus on what God's telling you. And he will give you confirmation. And you'll know by the word lining up with what you've been given. Because you're going to have naysayers. Not everything needs to be poured out in what God's doing in your life. Because what's going to happen is you're, you're going to be like Joseph. Joseph told his brothers about his dream and his vision. And they're going to say things. And they're going to tell you, oh, no, that's not God. That's not normal. God doesn't always do things that's normal. That's why we're peculiar people. It's time that we stop playing custody battle with God. We think because we come on Wednesdays and Sundays, oh, that's it. I don't need no more. Well, I don't know about you, but I need him on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and Sunday. I need him all day long. I need him 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because if I don't have him, I don't function. I'm nothing without God, nor can I do anything without God. And I pray that you are the same way. It's time that we truly get to know him. It's time to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. I've been there too many times. We're not perfect. There's only one perfect person, and that's Jesus Christ. It's time that we start checking ourselves because nine times out of ten, when the pastor comes to speak to you, the Lord's speaking to them, him, saying, I've tried to show them to check themselves before they wreck themselves. And I need you to talk to them. I need you to show them, give them scripture. And we need to listen. We really need to listen. No one else can do it for you. Oh, I want to draw closer to, to God, but I'm going to have Rachel do it for me. Oh, I want to read more scripture, but I'm going to have Heather do it for me. It isn't going to work, folks. The only way you can draw closer to God is you do it yourself. 
you got to make a date with Jesus. Not just, oh, well, Lord, I, I think I can fit you in five minutes over here. Oh, Lord, uh, well, I got this to do, but, well, maybe um, Thursday evening I can fit you in. It isn't going to work, folks. Stop the custody battle. The battle is the Lord's when we give everything to the Lord. He will take care of it. He will take care of you. Just as he did with Joseph. Joseph's brothers threw him in a pit. But God had a plan. Again, it's time to step out of your comfort zone. And start trusting God when you don't understand. There's been so many things I don't under, haven't understood, but I stepped out anyway. And I was in full of amazement. I was full at all. Many things can be out of our comfort zone, but yet Jesus will make it comfortable. Because what Jesus brings us to, he will bring us through. And he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He will make sure that we have the tools and the people and whatever is needed for what he's called us to do. Seasons aren't gonna last forever, nor will it destroy you. Our pastor has been in a season for a long time with his health. I've been in a season for since 2012 with my health, but it's not stopping me. I'm going forward for the Lord Jesus Christ. He's made you and me promises in his word but we got to learn to stand on those promises. we got to learn to speak those promises out. We've got to learn to speak his word out and speak to those mountains that's in our life. It's time that we start focusing on God. Nothing just happens. God will remove people, change your job, may even change where you live. But it's because he's preparing you for where you need to be. He's preparing you to be stronger than what you are right now. He's preparing you to have the wisdom and the knowledge for the next step and the next level in your life. As I look at different people and the things that they've gone through, it's touched them and it's changed their life to make them stronger for him. It's time that we step up and step out for his glory. God has a unique plan for you. that only you can do. Yeah, you. Everyone represented here today, God has a unique plan for you. It doesn't matter how old you are. He wants to use you. He's laying, he has laid things on your heart that he wants you to do. But you've come up with excuses. It's time to let go of the excuses and let God use you in the unique way that he wants to. Just as Joseph 
Joseph knew the plan that God had for him. But in Genesis 37, 24, he was put in a pit and sold by his brothers. But he didn't stay in the pit. Now he had a journey, but in the end, he became a ruler. And he ended up taking care of his family because of the famine in the land. A family that threw him in the pit. So in other words, in our journey, many things are going to happen to us. But if we don't learn to forgive, we may not make that next level. Forgiveness is in importance. Joseph still reached his destiny. When we stay focused on Jesus Christ, we're going to meet our destiny. Back in 2000, 2001, I wrote a song that God wrote it in, through me. And I was able to change it in different ways for where I was ministering. And I had to chuckle because what he did in me through this song, I hated this kind of music. I did. I hated it. But if he can do this through me, he can do through anything through you. It says, yo, yo, don't you know I was Mama G running around with all my little G's. But I've been delivered, you see. I know you think I'm a wannabe. But Jesus set me free. Now I have more of him in 2023. What's God putting in your heart? What changes is he wanting to do? Are you willing to say, God, I'm not enough. I need more of you. I need you to clean my house out. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait, oh, I want you to clean my house out, but you can't go in this room right over here. Oh, no, you better not go in there. That's a little cluttered. No. He wants to clean you out. He wants to make you fresh. He wants to make you new. He loves you unconditionally. How much are you going to love him? Are you going to take this time forward and draw close to him? Are you going to take this time to know who he really is and stop playing the games that you've been playing? Are you going to take the time to read your read his word so that you can know his word and to pray? Pray. Prayer is powerful. The title of today's sermon was What Happened But God. What's happened in your life but God's touched it in a way that you know that it was only Him. But God, what's He wanting to do now that you know that it's only Him? Church, it's time to step up. It's time not fasting and prayer we should be doing all the time. But even when we're not fasting, we still should draw nigh to Him. We should understand Him. We should know Him. We should wrap our arms around Him. 
We should have a romantic date with him. Oh, man, I'm a guy. I can't do that. That's Yes, you can. Fix a dinner as if you're on a date and have some candles and worship music and sit there just you and Jesus. Listen to what he has to say. That means we have to stop talking so we can hear what he has to say. God loves you. He wants you. He's reaching his hand out here to you today. I don't care how long you've known him. But stop knowing of him. Come to really know him. And let him love on you and change you for his glory, for his reason, in Jesus' name. Pastor, that's all I've got. Amen. Glory to God. He must decrease, I must decrease, and he must increase. Amen. You know, but whenever we start looking at things to work on ourselves, the enemy always tries to make it look like task, like a, a case to count the cost. And the Bible says if we look back, once we put our hand to the plow, we're not fit for the master's use. So I want to encourage you not to look back and, and to stop counting the cost. And quit, stop looking at it as a task. Amen. Jeremiah 20 Lewis says, I have plans for you not to harm you, but to give you a future and a hope. I, but the, the greatest revelation I think I've ever, one of them that I've ever got was figuring out it wasn't my plans, it was his plans. And then when I started doing his plans, that's when things started coming to alignment. So I believe God's speaking to you today to, hey, can we work on my plans this year? Can we work on my plans this year? And if you work on my plans, then I'm going to meet you. Joy, peace. Come on. Glory. But you get to choose every day when you get up. I used to do a lot of speaking with uh, people come from the background that I came from. We'll be doing some of that again. But, you know, I tell people, you, you know, if you got two wolves in the parking lot, you know which one wins? Whichever one you feed the most. Same way with your spirit man, your flesh man, you throw a little bit of your own self in there. You know which one wins on a daily basis? The one you feed the most. So I want to encourage you as you go out this year, as you've chosen to go all in with God and you're saying, God, I want more of you and less of me to know that it's the enemy tries to make it a task, but God's not a taskmaster. He said, if you know how to give good gifts unto your kids, how much more does your heavenly father know how to give gifts unto you? Do you really think he's going to ask you to do something and then just want you to be miserable while you do it? He said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Right? Romans 15, 13. Come on. It says he'll fill you with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, why do you need some? Because he knows when you get run down, you get weary. You'll get weary when you start pressing ahead, but he says, I never want you to do it from a place where you're feeling like, a like you have a taskmaster. Mm -hmm. I always want you to come from a place of victory. Mm -hmm. From victory to victory to faith to faith. And the times it's got the hardest for me, come on, as so you said, was preaching this morning, is whenever I started letting it feel like a task instead of a plan to victory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Remember what I quoted when the service started? Uh, be of good cheer. I'm already, you know, in this world, you're going to have troubles. You're going to have tribulations. But be of good cheer. I've already overcome the world. There's lots of things I don't like going through. You know, I'm praise God I'm not in a wheelchair anymore. They said I never walk again. I do pretty good now, right? But I'm still not to where I want to be. In case anybody hasn't got to know me, I'm a pretty driven man. <laughs> And I don't like to settle for just status quo. I've been anxious to get back to the gym, do all these things. But you know what? I've also learned to enjoy every season I'm in. 
If you spend all of your spiritual life trying to get to the next season, you miss the whole point of Christianity. It's God giving you joy in the middle of every season and see the beauty of his hand working in your life in every season. If you start counting the cost, you've already headed the wrong direction. Amen? Anybody get anything out of that? Amen. Glory. So, so glad you came today. Uh, if you don't like this service, come back next time. It'll be completely different, I promise you. Not because we try to be, but we just let the Holy Spirit have his way. Next week, we may be shaking from the chandelier. And uh, having a Holy Ghost blowout. They happen around here pretty frequently. But how many know the Word of God is important? It's important. It's sharp as any two-edged sword. And you need to feed it. I believe God's called us to have both. I believe you can have full of the Holy Spirit and full of the rain of the Word of God. God's spoken word now. If you have spoken his spoken word now, you have to fill up on his word on a daily basis. Amen. Amen. Deaconess, if you'd come take prayer requests and close us out in prayer.